The most revealing quote about the BFG is actually from Ruhl Dahl's Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. A little nonsense now and then is relished by the wisest men. Though the BFG also stands out for not taking its own advice. Don't gobble funk around with words. The 1982 children's novel The BFG follows the story of Sophie, an English orphan who is awake during the witching hour. On a whim, she looks out the window and is whisked away to the land of the giants. Most of the giants in the world are 50-foot tall monsters who run around eating humans at night. But Sophie is taken by the big friendly giant, the run to the litter who refuses to eat people. Instead, the BFG spends his time catching dreams and giving them to children. Despite the dark themes and occasionally frightening subject matter, the BFG fits in with Dahl's other children's novels in accessibility and engagement for all ages. It is also possibly Dahl's silliest and most whimsical book, with a plot that thinks and operates from the mindset of a young child, and a tone and vocabulary that's closer to Dr. Seuss than Goosebumps. It's the sort of book that might not make a lot of sense, but that's half the charm of it. I grew up reading Rural Dahl, and while I left a lot of other children's authors' work behind as I grew older, I continued to read Dahl. He's one of those rare authors whose work seems to grow in depth the older you get instead of diminishing. However, despite my familiarity with him, I never actually read the BFG as a kid for whatever reason. My school or library never had it when I was looking for stuff to read, and I never owned a copy, so it was one I ended up missing without meaning to. With the Steven Spielberg adaptation just coming out, I thought it was time to fix that gap. So what did I think? As a story, the BFG is... strange. Don't get me wrong, it's supposed to be strange. The book is full of nonsense language, broad and colorful characters, poirial jokes, and a plot that functions on a childish understanding of how the world works, all of which adds up to something that demands strangeness. Sophie, the main character we experience the world of the book through, is herself fairly normal, but she is quickly overwhelmed by the other things going on around her and forced to adapt and accept the strangeness just to get anywhere, similar to Alice in Lewis Carroll's Wonderland stories. And she adapts quickly. In reading the book, you must also accept and adapt to the strangeness in order to get anywhere, and the book does a good job of encouraging that feeling. As things happen, growing increasingly absurd and lost inside its own dream logic, a semblance of a plot reveals itself, and looking back in hindsight, it's easy to marvel at how tightly constructed and exacting that plot actually is. Every scene of every chapter is there for a clear and vital reason, in service to the story as it develops the characters in the world, and advances the plot in a controlled and expertly crafted arc. It's just that the arc itself is nonsense. Leaving specifics aside, the plot arc is strong and distinct, but follows that same dream logic. Characters come to conclusions based on a simplistic understanding of life, and then when they act under those silly conclusions, the world itself actually matches them. It feels like a story a kid might tell themselves when playing with action figures. The world's internal logic says, to hell with logic. This silliness and laissez-faire attitude towards the plot could, in a lesser work, feel oppressive and off-putting. Whimsy runs the risk of alienating its audience if done poorly. In a story, it's difficult to care about characters or events if you're not given a reason to care, and Whimsy makes a strong argument for there not being a reason for anything. In the BFG, Dahl strikes the right balance between the silliness and the heart of the characters. It's easy to connect to both Sophie and the BFG, and the book is full of genuinely funny moments, even at its most childish. Reading it as an adult, even without any nostalgia attached to the story or the characters, it felt like there was a nostalgia to it, if only to a state of mind in my youth. It was interesting to read this book so closely following the ocean at the end of the lane, because if Gaiman's work connected me to the disconnect between childhood and adulthood, Dahl's work made me feel like there never was a disconnect at all. However, as great of a tone the book has and how evocative it is, it's a double-edged sword. In capturing that sense of off-the-cuff childish storytelling, the plot is left feeling, well, off-the-cuff and childish. It's of course intentional, but that doesn't stop it from being a little disappointing. It's not a very satisfying story. No matter how much expert crafting has gone into a plot arc to make it feel like a stream of consciousness answering of the question, and then what happened, at the end of the day, it still feels like a stream of consciousness answer to that question. Whimsical things happen, leading to new fanciful things happening, culminating in a playful ending. Individual elements might be memorable, but overall you're left with a low stakes, low impact impression. Dahl has captured a more entrancing and memorable plot in other books to a much better effect. The BFG is fun and funny, but that's pretty much all it is. It could be argued that I'm being unfair as an adult criticizing the plot to a novel directed at children, and I'm of two minds about that. On the one hand, yeah, it's valid and reasonable to say that as a work for children, if it accomplishes what it set out to do, it's entirely successful. 
As an enduring book, it's safe to say the BFG does speak with deeper and more lasting impact to children than it does to adults. So while the plot might not hold up to more mature sensibilities, there's nothing wrong with it. On the other hand, well, I like entertainment that's directed at children, and to qualify that type of media as unassailable, or worse, unworthy, of critical analysis from an adult perspective is to deny that these stories can still mean something to adults as well. That doesn't sit right with me, especially when what's being criticized isn't an inherent quality of the medium. The plot of one story not holding up to an adult is less easily dismissed when there are plots that do hold up. Compare the BFG to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Never mind the Tim Burton adaptation with its radically different, if interesting, ending. Think the original novel, or to a lesser extent, the Gene Wilder movie. Wonka, The Factory, and the other Golden Ticket winners aside from Charlie are all silly and strange themselves, and some of them think and act under the same child anti-logic as the plot of the BFG, but the plot itself isn't especially silly. The situations and characters are, but the arc leading those silly characters through silly situations does have a logic to it. Vices are punished and virtues are rewarded, and while it might feel a little moralistic and as weird or as dark as it gets, everything that happens feels sharp and earned within the novel's own world. In the BFG, however, some of the events don't feel earned, most notably the latter half of the book. It feels pat and simple, made up on the spot by a kid, granted a kid with a great imagination. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory's ending leaves you going wow, and imagining the glass elevator going off on wonderful adventures, whether you're an adult or a kid. There's no loss of wonder with age. It's a plot that works for any reader. But if you're an adult, the BFG's ending leaves you going... Oh. Diving into the mechanics, the book shines its best and brightest inside the actual prose, as is common for Dahl. The prose has to do the heavy lifting of selling the absurd alongside the characters, because the characters, events, and situations are all too loose and carefree to really be compelling on their own. It needs to be funny, engaging, easy to read, and easy enough to follow to not lose anyone. To get a sense of it, we can look at the passage of the BFG explaining to Sophie what he eats instead of people. What I mean and what I say is two different things, the BFG announced rather grandly. I will now show you a snoz cumber. The BFG flung open a massive cupboard and took out the weirdest looking thing Sophie had ever seen. It was half as long again as an ordinary man, but was much thicker. It was as thick around its girth as a perambulator. It was black with white stripes along its length, and it was covered all over with coarse novels. Here is the repulsant snoz cumber, cried the BFG, waving it about. I squiggle it. I mespise it. I despunge it. But because I is refusing to gobble up human beings like the other giants, I must spend my life guzzling up icky poo snoz cumbers instead. If I don't, I will be nothing but skin and groans. You mean skin and bones, Sophie said. I know it is bones, the BFG said. But please understand that I cannot be helping it if I sometimes is saying things a little squiggly. I is trying my very best all the time. The big friendly giant looked suddenly so forlorn that Sophie got quite upset. I'm sorry, she said. I didn't mean to be rude. Are you smiling? I'm smiling from saying it out loud. Overall, the book is a joy to read. It's paced at a fast clip, and as the structuring is so tightly compact, nothing feels flabby or pointless, even in a novel about nonsensical things. It's short, shorter than what some would classify as a novel, and in that brevity succeeds in never overstaying its welcome, provided you're okay with some extravagant silliness. The story might be low stakes and the impact might be soft, but anyone with a goofy streak could get something valuable out of it. I'm going to cautiously give the BFG a worth reading recommendation. If absurdity or a sophomoric sense of humor isn't your thing, or you're looking for a solid plot, maybe just give the first chapter a try and see if it grabs you. However, if your plan is to read this book to or with your child, then it's an emphatic worth reading recommendation. It will most comfortably be at home on a genre shelf with the other children's novels. Hell, you could probably make the argument that ruled all books are a genre all on their own. Just don't mix any of his work that was aimed at adults in with the children's books, though. That wouldn't go over well. That wraps up my spoiler-free thoughts on the BFG. Two weeks from now, I'll be back for part two of this review, getting into spoilers to discuss a few of the themes of the book, including nationalism and vegetarianism. I hope you'll join me then. In the meantime, let me know what you thought of the book. Was it your favorite doll book growing up? Which one was your favorite? Mine was Matilda. Nowadays, it's Fantastic Mr. Fox, but as a kid, it was definitely Matilda. And hey, that new Spielberg movie just came out. How did it compare to the book? I'd love to hear your thoughts. That's it for this one. TTFN.